perhaps Emanuele Balzani, would you please tell us a little bit about the process in creating the collages for the show, looking for you, looking for me? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, it started, um, uh, like, I mean, I was just coming here and uh, working without thinking of doing something specific. Uh, I had brought some images from India, from a Chinese book of masks, that uh, I suddenly found it in my bag. Um, and coming here, uh, since there, there was other material, uh, I started using them and immediately they were like, if I remember well, there were seven images that came out, some sketches of faces. And Deborah then, uh, she said, wow, it would be beautiful to have them all together on a wall. So it was like, not at the time, it was not like, let's say, official, but she proposed to make an exhibition. So what happened is that I started using um, a tool, let's say, that I uh, was forbidden to my tools that I, I was forbidden um, to myself until now, which is photocopy. Because I was making the copies of the sketches just, you know, to have a track of them. But then, since I didn't like them anymore, I was using the copy <laughs> that I had done. And I found out that it's an amazing uh, way of um, uh, doing variations, variations, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, which is something that I love. And by the way, another uh, uh, physical and let's say image that um, uh, provoked this collection, let's say, birth, um, was an image by Steichen. It's a picture of uh, Gloria Swanson that I found in a restaurant. Um, in a, some, it was an advertisement for uh, something, I don't remember what. Um, and I found a lot of them, so I had like seven or eight. So it was already the beginning of a series. And then with photocopies, um, I started doing that and I started working on many images at the same, same time. Uh, which is not unusual for me, but... Um, I think that something that uh, still keeps my attention is that using the same image with different, I mean, a part of the image, of course, which is not always the same, uh, it was a face, I mean, a portrait of glorious ones. Um, you see that, uh, you know, it can become, um, how do you say it, like, well, let's say, hundreds of, of different, different, um, uh, expressions and that was what I was telling you the other day that uh, uh, I find interesting about the fact that if you have the same image and you cut a different part all the um, expression can can change and of course if you associate it with something different of course even more and what I believe is that, in a way, there is a potential that is already in the, in the, let's say, in the face, that uh, the potential is already there. So that this, this is what happens with us too, that we have the tendency of identifying ourselves with one main emotion. I'm angry, I'm happy, I'm in love, I'm this and that and we forget the end, A-N-D, um, which is, and this, and that, and that, and that, which is what I was telling you, I officially learned from Gilles Deleuze and from Jean-Paul Godard, that instead of using the, this or that, they're using this and that. Um, and I think that, in a way, it came out uh, in, in the result, that for me is just the beginning, I mean, that, that series of about 50 um, uh, portraits. I think that I can go on and make others with uh, partly the same material. 
it's exactly the manifestation of that, uh, what I was co calling multiplicity or plurality, I don't know exactly how can you say in English, but uh, of, of uh, potential that we have. I, I don't know, in a way for me, it, it's, it's um, a liberating thought. Um, it goes, I mean, with uh, the, the, the experience and the belief, but uh, the experience that if we stop identifying only with one thing, then we can go and explore all the others and leave this uh, mm, abundance of, of emotions or uh, beings that we are instead of limiting ourselves to, to one. I mean, I don't know if it's clear what I'm trying to say, but um, I think that identity, as I told you the other day, identity for me is a very dangerous uh, uh, concept. You believe that you are a U.S. Army soldier, so you believe that you have to kill Iraqi children. Let's do like a very uh, example, like, but that, that's what it is. And then the the, the U.S. soldier, when he goes back, he finds that he's not only a, uh, a U.S. soldier and blah blah blah. So this is the danger of identity, and I think that it's better to take the risk uh, or to marry the danger of being as many as we can so that we can pick up um, the temporary identity that is uh, less um, that is less um, how would you say <laughs> which is less um, harmless, uh, no, un harmful. Less harmful to uh, to recognize that you have the multiple. No, no. I, I mean, I, I think it, choosing one thing um, can bring harm around you, while choosing the the, the multiplicity. Uh, gives this flexibility to, to, to be more uh, present in any kind of situation. When you say choosing, I guess you mean, I mean, it's going to happen, but you're recognizing that you have these multiple uh, emotions that are they're always occurring mm -hmm. and that, that they are identities or identifications. So, um, but you don't necessarily choose them. You choose to believe that you have one, which is probably false. Mm -hmm. But is there a choice to have the emotions? No, I don't think there is a choice, but there is the choice not to identify at least completely with that oh. emotion. So to give space to all the others that we generally don't see because it's the tree that hides the forest. Um, and that, that's why I was speaking about being harmful, because whatever um, identity you choose, even if it's like a benevolent one, it's still much more harmful and limited and, you know... It sticks. Exactly. I mean, there is a very nice uh, sentence, I don't remember, I think it's Henri Michaud that used to say that. He said, this person is too... I don't remember it exactly, but something like this person is too good to make any good. Um, it's too busy being good to make any good. Do you understand what I mean? If you just start thinking I am the good guy and I do only good things, you don't see that uh, there are things that um, uh, out of the frame that you could do um, and you cannot see because you are too busy thinking that you are the good guy and that maybe you don't have to give, um, I don't know, to slap someone, which can be actually what we need. Uh, I don't know if uh, I'm clear, but I mean, wherever I think we, um, we stuck um, believing that we are this or that, um, I think it's dangerous. So, if I could ask something we started to talk a little about, but 
What is it like to create images uh, that express facial gestures? How do they compare to the feeling of facial gestures within yourself? You can't see, the, you usually don't see what you're expressing. Um, it's easier to think of others' expressions, but we have them too. What, what um, do you think about the sensations of the muscles moving on your face when you're working, for example? When you're working, do you think of other people's faces, or are you thinking also of what's happening on your own? I don't think neither at mine nor at other people. I think that, um, I mean, in my case, uh, when I work, just at a certain moment there is a, a complex expression, but that seems to be um, clear, that comes out, and for me the image is done. Clear in what way? And that it's true it can be yeah there is something that you recognize like that generally I don't recognize immediately I don't know what it is I mean I couldn't describe it just with one word I mm. wouldn't say this person is melancholic or this face is like nostalgic but there is this and some other things but that 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 mm, mm. are you saying there's no like you don't name it because especially as you mentioned earlier it could be a multiple thing so yeah. how do you know why name you can't name exactly but you've seen this combination and it sounds yeah. like yeah. i know i'm interrupting you no 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 we're talking, that's exactly we're talking about not just you've seen this on one person's face you've seen this this is a human combination this yeah. isn't joe's combination although some people are you know maybe more distinct with them so yeah. that's fair exactly that sometimes these are these are "Quote unquote universal oh, yeah, yeah. combinations." Oh yeah, yeah. I think that the, 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 we can say that there are cocktails that we go through um, many times. So you can recognize a feeling that you had personally, or a feeling that you saw in someone. And sometimes, when I, I mean, when I name, like when I give a title to the, the collages, is because that person or mythological being or whatever. Uh, how do you say, um, has all this complexity in him or her more often than others. So, uh, do you know what I'm saying? What I, I mean, when I, I, I it, yeah. A person has a particular repertoire or a particular cocktail that they return to very regularly. Yeah. This, yeah. I mean, more often uh, than other yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. More, uh, would you go further then and say that humans possibly? As a, as the collective of us, or whatever, have a more, uh, have a, some more popular or more frequent expressions. So yeah. ev uh, even amongst an individual, an individual has a particular totally, yeah. tendency. Yeah. Even humans as a whole, you could almost point to. Mm. Can you think of any pieces that were in the current show, uh, the Looking For You, that, that might qualify? As something you've seen many, or you feel it, you've seen many, many times. I don't know. Well, I, I don't. Res I, I don't uh, answer directly, probably, to what you ask. But uh, what I have noticed in my, um, I mean, in, the, in that collection up there, uh, it was that, with really few exceptions, the eyes were never looking straight to you. There was Medusa, which, mm -hmm. by the way, it's probably the way. The reason, sorry, why I called it like that, because it, it was the way of, you know, looking into your eyes. And it was the last um, piece of the, of the show. Um, but yeah, mainly they were not looking directly. So they were here with us, let's say, but also sort of lost in one or more of their own uh, sensations or emotions, feelings and, and everything. Or um, there were like many pieces where one eye was looking somewhere else and the other one was looking uh, more straight camera. And yeah, and sorry, and why, why was, what was happening there with one eye maybe looking off but one I straight? I think it's our habitual pattern of not 
being able to be in the present very often. So there is a part of us that is here, and sometimes it's conscious of being here, and the other one that is constantly going past or future, like child projections, both. And this is really common to humanity, I mean, to being human. And, um, and I think that, yeah, the eyes and some other gestures, but mainly the eyes can really uh, uh, show that very clearly. Mm. Uh, and I see it in myself a lot when I take like uh, pictures of myself many many times I'm looking somewhere else I mean I'm looking either to, a, to a, uh, an imaginary future or back to a, an imaginary souvenir uh, like recollection or I say imaginary because anyway I'm not there yeah. I'm here thinking of that and that, yeah, that's pretty common, I think. Um, we were saying also something else the other day, which is, um, uh, I think, very... I mean, when I read that sentence by Anais Nin, speaking about the way we grow up... Do you remember which one it is? have it, it will take a little time to, uh, to find it, but um, well, where, where she says that we don't grow up, um, that we grow up unevenly. Um, oh, do you yeah. remember that one? Yeah, not... Uh... Where she ends the, the sentence saying, uh, we are made of layers, cells, um, constellations. Yeah. And she's saying that part of us is growing, another part is still linked to the past, another is projecting to the future. And, um, and I, I totally agree. And I think that uh, especially a collage can show that very clearly. I mean, of course, you can see that in a painting, in a, in a photograph or sculpture or whatever. But let's say that the collage, because you can recognize that the pieces are not the same size or the same quality of paper, the same uh, person when we talk about the face. So it's easier to, to, to get that, uh, that, that concept. And I think that people, when they look at them, even if probably consciously they don't translate that into, oh, it means this and that, but I think that there is a sort of unconscious comprehension of this and that if you so like, for instance, those um, faces and then make them read the sentence, they would understand it much quicker, much uh, faster, I mean, much easier. Because I think it's, again, uh, uh, a very natural, uh, and I would say fascinating, uh, characteristic of human beings, all. Oh. Some people have more consciousness of it, but I, I really think it, it, it's the same. Well, uh, I can think of my grandmother and of Einstein, and <laughs> which are pretty different people, and I think that both were experiencing in a different way, but the same, the same phenomena hmm. that she descri described so well. And anyway, it's again about this multiplicity that she's talking. And the fact that we are many layers, cells and constellations means we are many pieces that we are held together. Even if what I believe, and probably she did also, is that these pieces, since are constantly moving, uh, also the combination moves all the time. Because it, it, if now I start thinking of something I don't know, painful that I experienced like two years ago, uh, a piece of my face would change. And if immediately after, two seconds after, uh, I have a good news or whatever, that same piece can change and keep a little bit of that. Um, hmm. do, you, do you understand? Uh, so this, that's why I... You I, feel I, it's the same, it, I mean, it's not a case of this, this piece of the face has the memory and then the other one is already on to something else. 
can be also these. Um, I mean, for sure, there are pieces of our body on the face that keep really memories uh, yeah. uh, more than, than others. But um, even that, in a way, it's a choice. I don't say that you can free yourself completely from those memories, but you can make them lose a lot of weight if you open up to the possibility of being multiple. So more available in the present situation where there are like thousands of other occasions to, to, to make experiences that we generally reject because we are too busy carrying the old informations. So I would love to think that at least some of the pieces that were upstairs of my collages have also this availability. Like, in a way there is, in not all, but in most of the faces, there is a sort of blank something that is ready to, to accept or, you know, it doesn't mean neutral exactly, it means really open, I mean, when it works. <laughs> okay.